players a chance to get in, then they just took the game away. All right, taking the game away, it's not going to be taken away from you, I can tell you that much. It's news time, Andy Lengos here at Rise FM, and at Vuma, here is Uspelele Tuliza. for not wanting to name politicians he alleged are involved. He claims the new board, which took charge last September, met with subordinates and gave instructions to them without his knowledge. It has become a self-styled, engaged board or activist board and has uh, immersed itself in operational detail, which some would characterize as overreach. Scopa has resolved to call Gordon and the board to answer to the claims next week. Katlechompolo's family roped into the Tabobesta saga is breathing a sigh of relief after his parents positively identified his body. Mpolo's body was allegedly used to stage the rapist and murderer's prison escape last year. The family's long search for their 32-year-old son seems to have come to an end at the Bloemfontein mortuary today. Mpolo's body was placed in Besta's prison cell and allegedly burnt beyond recognition. Mpolo's uncle, Tapelo Barangi. <laughs> But guy. We don't know what happened to him. He disappeared. We don't know how he got to the hospital. Why couldn't they identify him at the hospital? How he ended up at the mortuary? What happened to him? So there's a lot of unanswered questions that still needs to be answered. And the family of a South African who was stranded at the border between Egypt and Sudan say they fear he may not make it home alive. Brandon Wallace, together with 10 other South Africans, managed to cross the border into Egypt today after being stuck at the border for two days due to documentation issues. Wallace's wife, Lizanne, says the ordeal has taken its toll on their family as well as her husband. And it's very hard for your husband to actually phone you and to say, um, I don't know if I'm going to make it through this, so I'll have to say goodbye. And that happened every time we spoke. A look at your weather. A partly cloudy Thursday in store for Gauteng. Tomorrow with isolated showers and thunder showers expected with Joburg dropping to an overnight low of 13, peaking at 27 degrees. Pretoria is at 13 to 28. Verenaging is at 10, also at a high of 28 degrees. Mikey Malapo, Eyewitness News. Eyewitness News on 947. For more, click ewn.co.za. High dosage administration can cause adverse reactions. And most importantly, independent in mind. This is a normal response. Are you ready for our sports worldwide? Let's ask uh, Coach Gavin when he was coaching KZ Chiefs. Was he giving the players that he wanted? Okay, Barry White. Barry White. (laughs) (laughs) Sure you're right. Sure you're right. (laughs) Changing and re-engineering sports on the continent and the world. For me, Asa's one is clueless. He doesn't know what he's doing. Tactics wrong. You know, everything is wrong. The substitution's wrong. Uh, Team selection wrong. No plan B. I don't know. He doesn't know what he's doing. I mean, you look at Maruma Galantz this year. Unbelievable what they've done. I mean, you know, they've been under the radar and and they're really, you know, and and they play the same 11 or 12 every week. But I think they can beat them, go through the next round. No, they can. I really think they've got a great chance. I I mean, you you, you know. They just don't want to be in the staff, get left in Libya. (laughs) (laughs) Robert Marawa, live on 947. Vuma FM, Rise FM, and Sowetan Live. Hashtag MSW. First league title was all 100 points, so it was not difficult. As a manager, you we won... won Barcelona uh, and Bayern Munich before. I'm talking about Mikel. Well, in, in Bayern Munich, we won in February. And in Barcelona, we won four games uh, in advance as well. So, it's easy. But the team is ready. The team is ready to to the big battle tomorrow. I'm pretty sure how difficult it will be. Uh, suffered the bad moments. 
and and try to you know to to try to you know to do it. I, I repeat the same. I didn't have we we make a bad bad season or we make a, a drop a lot a lot of games. The problem is Garson was an unstoppable, so he didn't make 50 points in one leg. So when that happened, is heads off. So but I think we didn't we didn't drop comparing much. I had the feeling from the previous seasons. No, no, honestly, no one day. So I know it's close. I don't know how many goals has to score to break the record, but uh, I had the feeling he's happy when it's just to see him how he celebrates the goals of his mates. So when I'm impressed the most, I normally the strikers are just think about my goals, my goals, and he won't score goals. He's happy. But if you see when Riyad scored last day or other players, you see his joy and his happiness. So, but that is a good sign. Be a little bit nervous. So the people like the society teenagers. So. All of them guys are psychologists for the mental health and because they don't accept be nervous as part of our lives, be anxious as part of our lives, uh, be scared as part of our lives and nothing happened. We don't have to be perfect. We educate our kids, they have to be perfect for Instagram and TikToks and these kind of things. They have to be genius, you know, they see that, oh, how good they are. So when you are in that position and happy, then it's part of the life. You can tell it's a big game tonight, eh? The Man City manager Pep Guardiola joking that it is easy for him to win the league titles ahead of his side's most important match of the English Premier League season against Arsenal at the Etihad Stadium. Now, Arsenal lead the Guardiola side by five points at the summit, uh, but City have got two games in hand, and if either side emerges victorious from the top of the table contest tonight, then hey... And they go on to win all the remaining games. They will clinch the title. It's as simple as that. As we welcome you to Marawa Sports Worldwide. It is a Wednesday soccer night ahead of a long, 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 long weekend. Good to have you on board, eh? You're at 947. Also live on the Vuma FM, Rise FM, on and so went and live. Be interactive. Give us your thoughts about the big game tonight. And as I said, all eyes are going to be at the Etihad Stadium when Man City host Arsenal in what is dubbed the title decider. Or is it? I mean, it's the kind of game that will define their season. I mean, the Premier League title isn't quite on the line just yet. Uh, but in most people's eyes, it is. So the Gunners are first, if you haven't been following, in the Premier League with 75 points. Citizens trailing uh, five points behind them, but have got two games in hand, while Arsenal have drawn their last three league matches. We go live now uh, to the city of Manchester. Currently painted blue, I believe. Eh? Ian Cheeseman joining us to take us through this match as well as the anticipation ahead of the clash itself. Ian, thank you so much. Good evening. Welcome to the show. All right, we'll try to get uh, Ian back on the line as soon as we can. But as I said, just lining it up very nicely for the clash tonight. We'll tell you all the hits and misses ahead of that clash. But maybe also just affording us a little bit of time while we line uh, him up. I know that he's in the midst of uh, so much excitement. They're having a, also attended the press conference. Uh, he'll give us uh, the insights, the intel, as far as what it is that we can expect uh, from the game uh, overall. And as you know, that uh, City players Kevin De Bruyne, as well as Phil Foden and Rodri, say that they have to stay hungry to replicate uh, that uh, 3-1 win that the Gunners had back in February. So let's go back and see if Ian Cheeseman uh, can hear us. Ian, I can imagine that the excitement getting the better of a lot of people that side of the world. Uh, well, yes, it's a very exciting time to be either a City or an Arsenal fan. Some people are describing this as a title decider tonight. I would say it will be uh, highly crucial, uh, but I don't think it will be a title decider. But obviously, from the, uh, the world of football's point of view, that's how they will look at it. But it's so far out, there are still several games to go after this. Uh, there have been games similar. City played United um, three games from the end of the 2012 season, for example. Uh, Newcastle, the next to the last game. Uh, but this one's too far out to say it will be a decider. But psychologically, if one or the other of these two teams win tonight, uh, then I think that'll be uh, potentially uh, quite crucial because it gives that team momentum and belief as it goes into the last uh, few games of the season. 
What did you make of that uh, press conference that Pep Guardiola had? He seemed to have a lot of fun with it. Uh, I always read that when coaches have that much fun, they're trying to slightly deviate from a lot of tough questions being asked. Yeah, well, he, that's the type of guy he is. I mean, I attend all the press conferences, so I'm you know, used to seeing his reaction, and he does get asked some stupid questions sometimes. <laughs> um, I mean, one, one reporter from, I think he was from Norway, uh, the press conference before last said to him, um, when Erling Haaland was at Dortmund, uh, he used to score quite frequently with his first touch when the ball came to him. And the other night, it took him three touches. Is that something that worries you? And you think, is that a real question? Are you for real asking a question like that? And he just grinned and he looked at the, the guy who was asking the question. And I, I was sat on the front row of the press conference and I just looked at him and smiled. I mean, it's as if people are running out of things to ask because City get you know, very successful. They tend to win most of the games. Um, so maybe the journalists have got no, no new angle. Um, it, it, it shows what that does show, though, is he's quite relaxed. Mm. Um, he doesn't feel the pressure in the way that other people do. And so whilst, you know, there might be people hoping that he'll play mind games or the same thing will happen from Arteta's perspective, he doesn't really want to join in with that. He just wants to enjoy football. And clearly he does and his team does. It's it's pretty strange though, Ian, because we normally reserve these Wednesdays for European nights. But here we are um, in what people have said is the biggest, one of the biggest games in the English top flight for a decade. Would you agree with that sentiment? Um, no, actually. Um, one of, yes, I suppose I'd, I'd say one of, but um, uh, even for City, they've had bigger games than this in the Premier League. Um, you know, as I said, they played United uh, three games from the end of the 2012 season, and that was the biggest derby that the, there's probably been in my lifetime. Uh, arguably, the FA Cup final that's coming up will we'll match that. Um, but, you know, you think back to Liverpool against Arsenal a few years ago when Arsenal won at Anfield to win the league. You know, there are, there are bigger games. And because there are still several league games to go after this, I mean, City play again next Wednesday against West Ham. They've got a trip to Brighton on a Wednesday. So you're mentioning these midweek fixtures. Those are three Premier League games, this one tonight and those other two, that are all potentially... Um, you know, decisive games. If City lose, whatever the result of the, uh, the game tonight, if City were to lose at Brighton the midweek before the final game of the season, that could turn it back in Arsenal's advantage. So I wouldn't say tonight is decisive, but it's certainly a big game. And I can understand why most people in the media are building this up to be a title decider. I suppose also when you look at uh, Mikel Arteta, where he was prior to going to Arsenal, there's always a link. You look at the type of footballer as well, Ian, uh, that Arsenal have begun to play and it has a little bit of a footprint of what Pep Guardiola is all about. So it could also just be a clash of style, of technique and also just the fluid and entertaining football I think that the world really wants to see. Yes, I can't imagine we, we, you know, you'd want a better game than this because um, Arteta has very much uh, been mentored by Pep and plays football generally in the same way. So it won't be route one, it won't be counter-attacking, it won't be five men behind the ball, at least I don't expect it to be from either team. They only know how to play one, one way. It's the type of football I like watching. It's generally the type of football I would argue that TV audiences all around the world want to watch. So it should be, you know, an absolute thriller. Now, but then again, if you'd have asked me two weeks ago to come on and, and this game had been two weeks ago, I might have had a different vibe about it because Arsenal at that time were doing really well. Um, they hadn't dropped any points and they certainly had a, a decent advantage in the title race. But I think the three successive draws that they've had, twice being two goals up and throwing away a two-goal lead, means that psychologically this feels like a very, very different game and, and I would make City red-hot favourites to win this game tonight. And also just talking about Red Hot, yeah, the kind of question that was asked at the press conference, which uh, you know a lot of people thought was uh, slightly on the dumb side, uh, but it, it has one common name in it, that's Erling Haaland. And when you have to zero in on what he has brought out and how the numbers speak to somebody that is just beyond football right now, Ian, and he continues to do well. Yeah, there was a talk of an injury just before the international break, but that hasn't hampered him. He's gotten better and better. 
How much did he dominate that press conference just in terms of talkability? And what did you take out of it about him? To be honest, the last press conference, um, uh, half of it is, is what they call embargoed. So a lot of the fans don't hear that until the morning of the game today, in other words. Um, there wasn't an awful lot of Erling Haaland questions in it, I guess, because, as I say, I'm there at all these press conferences. And the number of questions that there have been about Erling Haaland seems to have exhausted just about every question you can possibly ask about him. We can all see when he's on the pitch that he's, he's a physically dominating player. Um, he has high energy. Uh, you know, he, he's very acrobatic despite his size and his physique. You know, he can score goals that other players wouldn't reach. You know, that hook over, over the shoulder that he scored in a game recently, not many players would have got to that. Um, so he does offer something different. But in terms of journalistic questions, how many questions can you ask about, you know, how... How important is Erling Haaland to you? How good is he? Will he get a hat-trick today? It's like you're just repeating the same questions over and over again. So although he's definitely in the fans' minds and he does offer a dimension that City didn't have before, there is a, there is a finite way that you can discuss that. And uh, for now, at least, it feels like most journalists uh, you know, run out of, of ways to ask a different angle question, really. Yeah, well, I think the one you mentioned earlier is probably a classic. It should go down in the history books as well. Uh, but, you know, flipping away and focusing on Arsenal, Ian, because, I mean, they're simply here yeah, looking for their first league win uh, in games between these two sides since December 2015. Um, and when I had a look at these stats during the day, and I was like, what, City have actually outscored the Gunners 35-9 to during that whole unbeaten streak. Now, do they have the manpower, the capabilities, given mentally what they went through over the weekend to, you know, put out some of their top men, whether it's uh, Martinelli, Saka, Odegaard, to go out there and get the goals that they've been scoring frequently? The short answer to that is until we watch the match tonight, we don't know, and, and football's brilliant. That's why I love it. I, you know, I don't come to this match because I know what's going to happen. I might think I know what's going to happen, but a particularly a big game like this has so much at stake, so much jeopardy, um, that anything can happen. It's a one-off game. Uh, a player could get sent off early. A key player could get injured. Harlan could, be, could, could have to go off with a hamstring injury. Obviously, we don't hope that. After five minutes, or Odegaard or Saka could go off after five minutes. There could be a controversial VAR decision. Um, the league is over 38 games, and I certainly believe that over 38 games the best team wins the league in a one-off game which is what this is tonight which isn't decisive I don't believe this game in itself will be decisive anything can happen so they do have an array of talents but Arsenal's whole mentality has been damaged what's, uh, by what's happened to them just recently it's likely that they're going to be missing Xhaka and Saliba who are two crucial players I believe for them Certainly Saliba. I mean, Rob Holding, who's been playing in that defensive position for Arsenal, when I see him playing, um, I don't mean this disrespectfully to him. I couldn't play football at that level or the level he plays at. But I, I think, personally, he's a weak weakness in the heart of that Arsenal defence. And if Saliba was playing for Arsenal and they just won at Anfield, they'd just beaten West Ham and beaten Southampton, then this game could have gone either way. But I, I believe the psychology of where we're at at the moment means that City have a massive advantage. They're inside their own stadium. Uh, 11 games in a row City have won, which is a source in the league that's you know, you know, even beaten them in the FA Cup earlier this season. So there's a massive, massive psychological advantage. And City feel relatively unstoppable at the moment. I mean, obviously, Real Madrid might say something about that in the Champions League. And there's the FA Cup final against United to come. But I do personally, I believe, this game tonight, City are massive favourites to win it. Talk about massive favourites. What's the City buzz like before we let you go, Ian? Because here in South Africa, it's just ahead of a, a long weekend. And uh, it's almost like we are the ones that are in the UK. That's just how much excitement this has built. Well, I'm so pleased that, that, that you are. And uh, if it helps, uh, if anybody, I mean, I do a YouTube channel, uh, which you can search Ian Cheeseman or Forever Blue, and I talk to fans before and after every game to try to, to bring to people who are further afield a feeling of what it's like to actually be at the game, you know, what it's like to be a fan, 
what it really looks like. You can watch the game on TV and you can see every detail, but what does it actually feel like to be there? And I talk to fans all the time. I've already talked to Sean Golter, a, a former City striker. He's excited about the game. Of course, everybody's excited about the game. I, I see people on social media over here saying they didn't sleep particularly well last night because of the excitement. But City, in years gone by, City fans, certainly the older fans, would, uh, would be a lot more nervous than the modern generation of City fans. They were coming to games now quite regularly, not in an arrogant way. That isn't what City fans are all about. But coming here thinking, you know what, we will win this game. We can win this game. The evidence of the eyes of what we see with our eyes is that City are a phenomenal team. And so I think that's why most City fans now are coming here excited, mm. but also expectant. Look forward to those uh, interviews. The always do pop in to watch them as well. Uh, that's uh, Ian Cheeseman. You can catch him on the social media platforms. Exciting stuff uh, prior to the games. Listen to the fans, what they expect and what they want. Ian Cheeseman, Manchester City correspondent, joining us right here on hashtag MSW. Thanks again, Ian. Marawa Sports Worldwide Live. In three, two, on 947, Vuma FM, Rise FM. And so we're to live. Whether you're transporting people or goods, let us protect the business you've worked so hard to build. My Way Business Insurance offers comprehensive insurance for your commercial vehicles, goods in transit, liability cover, and more. And with us, you only pay for what you need. For a quote, visit myway.co.za or call us on 0860 646464. 64 64. My Way is a licensed non life insurer and FSP. Standard rates and T's and C's apply. In my business, you know, I was always told, look before you leap. I'm more like, uh, leap before you look. Because if you spend too much time looking, you'll end up not leaping, you know. And besides, the vantage point from the air is much better. So, leap, man, leap. Become a Sage customer like Miles and set up your business to fly with our helpful accounting, HR and payroll tools. Visit sage.com today. Sage, helping business flow. Caution, month end approaching at speed. Recalculating. Continue straight to afford more in store. Download the Payflex app to navigate an endless world of shopping. In four payments over six weeks, you will have arrived at your destination. Shop now and pay later at 0% interest. Payflex, this is shopping. With easy to connect MWeb LTE SIM and router deals, you can scroll, lull, stream and meme, even when the power is out. From only $3.99 per month, you'll not only get better internet, but a free UPS too, so everyone at home can stay connected without any expensive data worries. Don't miss out. Get your free UPS today with MWeb LTE. Visit mweb.co.za or call 87 5000 to find out more. T's and C's apply. Warm it up with Woolies this winter. Get 30% off women's, men's and kids' sleepwear, slippers and gowns. Offer valid from the 26th of April to the 1st of May 2023. Shop in-store, online and on our app. T's and C's apply. Woolworths, the difference. Deal or No Deal is more than just a game show that everyone talks about. It's a game show that transforms the lives of everyday South Africans. To date, we celebrate more than 1 million rand worth of cash prizes that Deal or No Deal has helped to change lives. You too could win up to 250,000 rand in cash with me, Gatayako. Simply SMS the word PLAY to 43066. Standard SMS rates apply. Catch Deal or No Deal on SABC1 at 7.30pm and on SABC3 at 5.30pm every weekday. Deal or No Deal is sponsored by Lotto Star. Lotto Star is licensed by the Impomalanga Economic Regulator. No under 18s. National Responsible Gambling Program. 0800-006-008. T's and C's apply. All games are fixed on betting events. Previously on Marawa Sports Worldwide. Welcome to the good life.
When Gavin Hunt is always hunting, believe it. And we've hunted him down again. Coach Gavin Hunt, good to see you, sir. Hello, Rob. How are you? I'm as strong as can be. Jeez, fancy place you got here, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, look at it. Oh. Hey? Welcome to the good life. Yeah, I'm well, Chalk and cheese, huh? Eh? Yeah, no, cheese, like <laughs> you've come a long way, Rob. <laughs> Thanks, Gav. Yeah, thanks, Gav. Yeah. Welcome well to the family. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. Hey, we're mm. proud of you. That's why we call you in here and we say, mm. I remember mm. frustrated Gavin coming back to Super Sports United and you were probably not getting the kind of players that you wanted. Hardly knew the players. Still haven't. There. <laughs> <laughs> nah. <laughs> this is the good life. Homie oh, Tammy was good. Hashtag MSW. Hashtag MSW. Wednesday nights, soccer nights, your nights. Well, I'm seeing a lot of your WhatsApp voice notes uh, coming through. We'll take them in a second. And as we conclude that build-up to the game tonight, to the City players Kevin De Bruyne, Phil Foden, as well as Rodri say that they have to stay extremely hungry to replicate uh, that 3-1 win against the Gunners that happened back in February. So Arsenal have lost significant ground, though, in the title race in recent weeks with three successive draws, uh, leaving them five points clear of City, but having played two games more. Now, this clash gives the reigning champions the chance to begin their overtaking manoeuvre on the road to a fifth Premier League title in six years. It makes no sense to get more hyped up in, in for one game and not for another because then it's too much up and down. You have to try and stay consistently on the on the same level and, uh, you know, we, we know the importance for for, for some games, obviously, it's bigger than, than others, but the, the preparation remains the, the same. I think we just knew that we it was a must-win game because it was so crucial in terms of like the points. I feel like everyone was just up for it and you know in we've we've played big games like that before in previous seasons where it must it must it's a must win game and um obviously I didn't play that game, I came on at the end but from what I seen in the locker room everyone was so focused and yeah. so determined to get the result done and, and win and yeah it was so nice to see. Many things uh, that are important but of course uh, the mentality I think the the desire the the hard work every day to don't drop your your mood, your enthusiasm every day to try to be the best of your of your own way uh, every day and as a team also and try to support the teammates when they're down. These kind of details can make the difference and yeah, try to, to have this, this feeling here, this hunger that you need to achieve, to achieve these trophies and try to renew this every day of, of, of your life until the end of the, of the season. This is what the coach tried to explain us, what we try to, to do, because when you play with this, with the happiness, you always do better. I believe that he's going to beat it. Um, he's so driven to score, I think you can see that. He's always making runs into the box, always yeah. wants to be there for the finish. And um, I, I, I see the determination from him and yeah, hopefully he can break it. Yeah, he definitely can. <laughs> Why, you know, because he just scores goals and it's 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 what is his strong point you know obviously um will he do it probably if we create enough chances for him then he will probably do it but um yeah we'll see and if he does that will be great achievement for for him uh but hopefully like you said we can also win the league together yeah players sounding very confident aren't they share your thoughts on your feelings and your expectations uh, because the Arsenal manager, Mikel Arteta, has also warned his players that they must achieve absolute perfection if they are to keep the Premier League title race in their own hands. We really want it. And uh, we're going to show that again tomorrow night. Uh, but then you have to deliver in the right moment, the right performance. And uh, and it has to be perfection because that's what this last level demands. is absolute perfection in every, every second ball. It's going to be a, a tough night and challenge, yes. But the opportunity is incredible for us. And we knew from the beginning, you want to win a Premier League, you have to go to Spurs and you have to beat them. You have to go to Chelsea and you have to beat them. You have to go away from them and you have to beat them. And this is what we've been doing. That's why we are here. And now we have to go to City and you have to beat them. You want to be champion, you have to win those matches. We are toe to toe with them. We know, we knew that we had to go to the Etihad. We know that after that, they're going to have another five very difficult games. So that game is going to be really important. Is it going to define the season? Uh, the answer is no. When they come in after two weeks, three weeks, they said, because they've been where they've been, they said, we can win this league. So it's not something that we have started to feel or they have tried to transmit. I didn't know about that, but they said to me that a few months ago. It's been going on since August. 
So it's not something that now you rely on them. No, no, this process has been coming for a long time. Well, when you look at the numbers, it's, you know, there's no comparison with, with anybody else, but this as well, he's able to produce that because the, the setup is done in the right way for him. Um, the players that he got around him, the way he's coached, you know, obviously the, the qualities that he has. So it's, it's a lot of things that have to be in, in their way. And they have, even with him, a capacity to play in different ways. Exact date? <laughs> Probably the last time that uh, that we played. And has he been in touch this week at all? No. Hey, imagine, has he been in touch this week? Love the answer, eh? Hi, good evening, Rob. Uh, this is Joel from Watford in Benoni. Talking about the big game tonight, Man City and Arsenal. I think Arsenal is going to win the game tonight because for the past three games, Arsenal has, hasn't been performing well. They have only managed a draw in each game. So tonight, really, really is their night. And yeah, I'm confident they're going to get the maximum three points. That's how I feel it. Thanks for the wonderful show, Rob. Thank you so much, Joy. Says Arsenal is winning tonight. Yes, it's sort of like, yeah, and Kevin said, yeah, Mr. Shelders. Wow, wow, wow. Talk about a cup final and a half in the Premier League tonight between Man City and Arsenal. Yeah, there are a couple of more games to look forward to, but this really, really takes the cup. It is a big, big game, no matter what happens. Champions will be defined in this game, and if City wins, City win the league. If Arsenal win, Arsenal will win the league. Uh, Arsenal really want the points because they've squandered three games to get vital, vital points. They've dropped vital points in those three games. City have uh, two games advantage, and on top of that, they've been doing so, so well. And going into City's backyard, it's going to be a hell of a task for Arsenal to get all three points. But it is a very close game. You can never, ever rule any possibility out. So really, really looking forward to this game between City and Arsenal. Great job, Mr. Rob. Thank you so much indeed. And I guess much of the world is anticipating tonight. So we'll play some of those voice notes later on in the show. Well, coming back home, though, I guess one of the things about clearing your name, it is never an easy task at all, especially when you say you have done no wrong. It's never easy. And that's exactly what the former Amazulu PR manager, Pumlani Dube, finds himself trying to do. So Dube held a press briefing this afternoon to try and clear his name. Uh, I'm told that he quit the job due to allegations of gender-based violence and all sorts of allegations that the club, Usutu, have gone out of its way to block all of his charity work sponsorship agreements. And to top it off, he received life threats from one of the club's hierarchy. So none of all of this is anything that should be taken lightly at all. Uh, let's try to get to the bottom of all of this. A highly disturbing issue. Those when I saw the urgent media conference invitation, I was like, wow, this sounds very, very serious. So the former Amazulu marketing manager, Pumlani Dube, joins me on the line. Uh, Babu Dube, thank you so much for your time. Good evening. Welcome to the show. Good evening, Robert, and thank you for having me. As I say, when I saw the, the, the media invite, uh, you know, it was urgent. That's the one thing that stood out. And you said that you would like to invite a press conference to explain the real reasons behind my departure from Amazulu. I think a lot of people did not know then that you had left Amazulu. And you said in that invite that I'd like people to know the real story in case something happens to me. You are invited to attend. The details of the prayer briefing are as follows. And you gave those uh, details as well about where the venue is going to be at Montenegro uh, Road down in Durban. So put us in the picture here. I mean, it sounds very disturbing, especially when one says that they've had a death threat or death threats. I don't know if it's a series of them. Tell us what's happened here, Pumlan. Okay, Robert, I was dismissed unfairly from Amazulu in November 2022 following allegations of assault against a female co-worker. The allegations are untrue. A hearing was held where the female herself said it, that I did not assault her. But still, I was fired from the club. 
And you then ask yourself, why? What is the reason? The lady says it, that uh, she was not assaulted, but some people within the club try to find a way to elbow me out of the organization using this so-called assault which didn't take place. So basically, that's the long and short of it. I was uh, asked from the club in November following an incident of an alleged assault which took place at FNP Stadium on the 12th of November at the Culling Black Label Camp competition. And um, I was uh, subsequently uh, dismissed after a hearing was he- held down in Durban. My last day at Amazon was the 28th of November. So did this I hearing have... find you guilty, though, Pumlandi? Because if you're saying that the, the, the said person who would have been the recipient of that so-called abuse has come out and told them that it did not happen, then on what grounds were you fired? Exactly. That is what is baffling uh, to me. That is what I'd like to know. That's why I have challenged the club. I have uh, the matter is before the court, the CCMA, uh, under review, because I will not take this lying down. I want to clear my name. Um, what I believe is at play here, Robert, is that some people at Amazulu, even before this incident, I knew this, some people did not want me at Amazulu. Some in the management did not want me at the club. But because I am an upright man, I don't drink or smoke like many of them do. They did not find anything to hold on to. They could not find any dent, anything they can use against me because I do not live the wild life that they live. So they were just fortunate that uh, this uh, said person was hired in November Mm. and uh, she was used in November. Uh, as part of their plot to get rid of me, I'll, I'll, I'll get to the I'll get to the they part, uh, Pumlani, because you, you know I'm gonna I'm gonna keep knocking away here at you because one of the claims and you've just mentioned it now in passing and and one of the issues that you raised at the press conference today, uh, you were claiming that the management as well as the players of Amazulu uh, are, are openly drinking alcohol, and that is the one thing that you've said you don't do so. In, in, at, at what point? Is this during camp? Is this during their free time? Why was it important for you to bring this point up at the press conference and distance yourself from it as well? It, it was very important, Robert, because it... You see, the Culling Black Label Cup took place on the 12th of November, right? Correct. We, we, we drove up to Joburg on the 11th of November. Um, some of us uh, from the marketing department and so on and so forth, I think there was about seven or eight of us and the players uh, flew to Joburg. We, we um, traveled by road uh, using one of the luxury buses. So um, as we left Durban, some of the colleagues asked the bus driver to stop at one of the bottle stores to buy booze. So he stopped, he buys booze. They start drinking along the way, male, female, all of them in the bus. Um, So they drink, we get on the entry. While we're on the entry, one of the uh, workers, a female uh, co-worker, says uh, she she wants to pee. Obviously, you know what alcohol does. Mm-hmm. She she wants to pee now. And she asks the driver to stop on the entry for her to jump uh, to the bushes to pee on the side of the road. And as 
someone that works as a PR or brand manager for Amazulu who has the club's best interests at heart, I found that inappropriate. I said, no, uh, I, 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 that can't happen. It, 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 it doesn't look right. It, it, it will not look right for, you know, passers-by to see an Amazulu bar, a bus, a bus, branded bus, and uh, f- female uh, f- uh, colleagues of Amazulu in the bushes peeing. Uh, why don't we wait just a little bit until we get to uh, the fuel station, uh, which was, I uh, can't remember how many kilometers, it was quite close by. Mm. And uh, the said uh, person said, uh, no, this is her, um, what's this thing? This is her bladder. Uh, I, 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 she, I, I, she will not, uh, I must shut up. Hmm. So, so, so that you you interfering uh, basically in what she's feeling at the time. Uh, Pumlani, hold that thought. We 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 we're going to come back from the break and we'll pick up on exactly that because I think therein lies a bit of the detail, as graphic as it is. But hey, it is there. Marawa Sports Worldwide Live in three, two, one. on nine four seven Vuma FM, Rise FM, and Soweto Live. Hashtag MSW. You can't afford insurance. So many things can go wrong. What if something happens? Do what others say you can't with our flexible business insurance. Because with personalized and competitive quotes, flexible premiums, and a dedicated claims team, you can rest assured that the business you've worked so hard for is well protected. Start, manage, and grow your business at standardbank.co.za forward slash rise above the noise. Standard Bank, it can be. Standard Bank is an authorized financial services and registered credit provider. T's and C's apply. Want to win the new Samsung S23 Ultra? <laughs> of course you do. Go check out Rentosa, South Africa's first subscription platform for all your electronics and enter the Snap to Unlock campaign. They're giving away three new phones from the new Samsung range. All you need to do is go to any of Rentosa's social media pages and follow these easy steps. Find the Snap to Unlock post, play the screenshot game, add your image to the comments and share the post. It's that simple. Check out rentosa.co.za for more info or download the app from the Play or App Store today. T's and C's apply. Things are racing ahead. Your account's in the red. The kids need new shoes and account payments are due. I shame South Africa. You need a reason to smile. So get smiling with these deals from Spa. Bacoma Wheat Bix 900 grams. Rewards customers pay $39.99. And Huggies Dry Comfort Value Pack Disposable Nappies $179.99 per pack. Valid until 7 May while stocks last. T's and C's apply. Spa. Wear for smiles. For almost a century, Robertson's has been famous for flavor. Now it's your turn. Are you known for your flavors? Can you make an ordinary dish extraordinary with Robertson Spices? Then we want to make you famous for your flavor. We've already made three home cooks famous. You could be next. Go to whatsfordinner.co.za, follow the steps on the Robertson's tab, and you could win. You and Robertson's, famous for flavor. You need to avenge my death. Time, we don't have time. It's nice to cut. There's a line between light and dark. You've crossed that line. Nothing gets buried forever. Secrets are not the only thing coal can bury. Smoke and mirrors. Tonight at 9 p.m. on ETV, your home of great stories. The following advert is for a product that is not for sale to under 18s, is not risk-free, and contains nicotine, an addictive substance. Hey, Joe. You know, my girl says I can't smoke cigarettes this weekend because her parents are coming over. Try vaping and switch to views. There's no odor. For real? No tobacco. Don't lie. Sure. There's over 20 flavors. Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh. Uh, okay. And there's different nicotine strengths. You know what? Perfect. Switch on to views. Visit the switch on tab on views.com to play our game and you could win a free device. Previously on Marawa Sports Worldwide. 
Andy Siwem Koi is here, my guest, and what an absolute honor. And you've said how disappointed you are in what women's football has given you because with all of those years that you spent in Europe, coming back, you're even saying that you're still renting a house. It said, um, we experience, experience a lento left from Abu Poshia. The next generation, they cannot experience into the experience in uh, How did you deal with not being selected for Banyana when you were playing so well in your career? You not being selected when the entire nation thought you would be. Honestly, I don't know. <sighs> for me, not being selected, we Banyana Banyana, I don't know. In life, you don't force things. Living in Rob, it's the Boko Year Rob. We are up for a nerve wracking encounter between Arsenal and Man City. And for me, Arsenal has been that team that has been capitalizing on moments of the game this season. And uh, City, I think Guardiola has undergone some realization that last season he was not able to deal with moments of the of the match. Uh, that's why he has now introduced a back four, which somehow solidifies and gives City a bit of a defensive structure. And for me, Rob, what is also key is to see uh, Stones also advancing into the middle field, becoming what you call a hybrid uh, middle fielder, and uh, uh, Gunduan dropping back to form part of a hybrid uh, centre back. Whenever the balls are lost in that uh, transition, they then land with Gunduan, who then starts that build up, and you'll normally you'll see that uh, both teams are building up with a 3 2 uh, model. Which for me, Rob, is going to be key to see how both teams are going to deal with the compact spaces in that middle field. And it will also go down, I think, to a tactical and tactical approaches of both coaches. And I think this match is one of those matches that will be won by mistakes of the other team. Thank you so much, Rob. It's the Bokoye. Wednesday nights, soccer nights, your nights. Well, a proper analytical breakdown, uh, Deboko, about the game tonight. Well, if you just landed in the country, you have no idea what we're talking about. Yeah, it's Man City up against Arsenal. But equally troubling is the conversation that we're having with Pumlani Dube, a former Amazulu marketing manager, as we're going into the break. And he was just uh, describing, and I know that we'll try and push because of time. Uh, there are a number of questions that I do want to ask him. So how did that end up? W- w- was there no way to Pumlani? And thanks again for your patience. Was there no way for you to get to the fueling station uh, so that, you know, she could go ahead and relieve herself? No, she, she like you said, she said uh, I will not interfere with uh, what is happening in her bladder. So she wants the bus to stop so she can go and uh, relieve herself on the side of the road. And uh, indeed, uh, the bus stopped and she went ahead and did that. Not just her, but uh, I think uh, two other uh, female co-workers that were there. And uh, it, it, it didn't look nice, Robert, but mm. uh, it happened. So you, 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 you were trying to protect the image of the club? I was trying to protect, yeah. exactly. The bus is branded. We are all wearing Amazulu gear. And it does look nice for passers-by to see that kind of thing. But uh, in this world, Robert, what I've learned is the good guys are the ones that become unpopular. People love uh, the wicked ones. And uh, that is the problem I experienced at Amazon. I suffered a lot at Amazon. Um, my experience at Amazon, Amazon unmade me. Uh, I can't even describe. When we get to, when we got to Joburg, we went to the busy corner. We were going to have an activation there. And uh, the activation didn't take place because it was already late. And besides, there was no crowd as anticipated. So we just had dinner. And uh, after dinner, we were going to go back, to, uh, go to the hotel. Uh, but just after dinner, I started experiencing sharp pains out of nowhere in on my lower back, Robert. And uh, I've been to I, ICU twice in the last two years. And uh, the management knows this. Everyone at Amazon knows this. And I start experiencing sharp back pain at a busy corner in Bizo or something at the Chisanyam. Yes. After we have dinner, uh, the, the day before the Culling Black Label Cup, I collapse. 
and I I am gasping for air. I can't breathe. I ask them to call the ambulance for me. They say, no, let's rather just go to the hotel. The team doctor will check up on you when we get to the hotel. They don't call the ambulance. So we go to the hotel. We get to the hotel. I go to bed. The team, the team doctor doesn't come to check on me. Instead, they go out drinking all night. They come back in the wee hours of the morning. And in the morning, we wake up and have... Robert, what if something had happened to me? I am in the management of Amazulu, traveling with the club on a, 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 a business a related a club business related trip. Mm-hmm. I collapse at work. I plead for them to call the ambulance for me. They say no. Let's go to the hotel. We'll call the team doctor. We go to the hotel. They don't call the team. What if something had happened? What if I didn't wake up the next morning? So again, okay, we wake up, we had breakfast, we go to FNB for the Kalim Black Label Cup on the 12th of November. The first game is played. Amazon loses to Sundowns, I think, three or four nil. And uh, after the game, the players come and join us in the VIP suite. There was uh, the suites for us, the management and so on, and one for the players uh, because the the one for the players was uh, it, 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 part of the plan was the, the, the suite for the players was not going to have booze because they are playing, you know, mm. there, was, there was, you know, uh, whereas this one, um, there was booze and all sorts of things. Uh, so the colleagues are drinking in the VIP suite, but players find a way to bypass that system. Some of them uh, send friends to come pour some liquor for them and take it to where they are seated. And me being uh, the strict person that I am and someone that tries so hard to deliver, because my task is to look, uh, to take care of the interests of the club. So I stop these guys who keep coming in and out uh, of the suite to pour alcohol for the players. And uh, uh, obviously, uh, some among uh, the, 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 the club, the contingent we were traveling with, must not have liked that. Uh, because obviously, I'm too good. I think my scene at Amazon was being too good uh, because I'm, I was too good, surrounded by a lot of sinners. <laughs> that was my scene. So, just. On an on, on issue of detail again, uh, Pumlani, is all of these events that are happening. So when you're traveling, when the bus stops, when you're at the Shisanyama, when you collapse, when you're back at the hotel, all of these events are happening while you are in the company of the club's management. In the company, yes. Some of uh, the people in management were there. In fact, even the club CEO, Sunil Shabulo Zung, was there. Um, she was there when uh, I called uh, for the ambulance. And uh, and none of them were able to, to give you the kind of joy and satisfaction that somebody who's obviously in a form of distress uh, would none need. Of none of them would. And, and, and this culture that is being painted here is, it, it seems that there's a, a great deal of acceptance of, of drinking. Whether you're drinking on the way to work, you're drinking at work, you're drinking during the course of the time at the stadium at work and in the company of the players, it, it, it seems to be something that has been accepted. Or am I wrong? Or is that a culture that has always been there? You're quite right. Um, uh, the booze culture is a big problem at Amazulu. Um, so it, it, during the Kalim Black Lady Cup, the colleagues were drinking all day, almost. And around 5 p.m., after the final match was played, we then had to leave. And um, the female uh, colleagues requested us to come to the other side of the stadium where they had set up the Amazulu uh, FC kiosk where they were selling Amazulu club merchandise and so on and so forth. Mm. 
because some of the material was heavy for them to lift and come to where the bus was. So we drove to where they were. When we get there, now this is the serious part, the crux of the matter. When we get there, uh, one of uh, the female colleagues approaches, approaches carrying, uh, I think, a banner or something. I help her with that. I put it in the boot of the bus. And then I tell her that, unfortunately, I will not be able to help with carrying the rest of the uh, material because I still have that pain in my lower back. And if I start carrying heavy stuff, I don't know what, uh, how that will impact on you know, this uh, pain that I'm experiencing, especially because I was not even seen by the doctor. And the lady seems to, underst- to understand that. So I stood aside and she went to fetch more items. And then emerged uh, uh, another one uh, by the name of Zamanene, who was new at the time. She had recently joined. She had joined Amazulu in November as a marketing coordinator. She comes carrying uh, some of the material, some of the the branding material. And uh, she says, Robert, uh, in Zulu, she says, I'm a daughter of Agmazulu, I'm a daughter of Anjani. I hear the band is fazani by Chwalele in Pasaganje, a corner. As we never mentioned, my apologies for strong language. But she was basically saying we, had, we were just hanging our balls like that while they, as females, are carrying a uh, branding material. And uh, I told her that. Uh, the language that she was using is inappropriate. She was out of order. Mm. And uh, you can't can't use language like that in a professional setting. In fact, not not even in a professional setting. That is just inappropriate language for her to use, especially against us. We are much older than her. And uh, she charged towards me as if uh, she was uh, attacking me or something like that. And I'm like, what what are you doing? I'm only calling you to order because what you are saying is not right. And she then fell to the ground. And she starts, uh, um, I I, I, I don't know whether she was, she she rolls and rolls and rolls. So she's new to the company. I'm not familiar with her. So I don't understand what it is she's doing, whether she's dancing, whether she's experiencing a feat or what, I don't know. And then a few moments later, she gets up and says, uh, Pumlani, why are you beating me up? Why are you assaulting me? And then I ask, but when did I assault you? She said, okay, it's fine. She then leaves. Uh, we then get on the bus. This ha- is happening at FNP in full view of two female SAPS police officers and one FS- FNP stadium security. If there was uh, any assault that had taken place, they would have arrested me on the spot. But they didn't because they saw that uh, the, 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 the lady in question, Robert, was drunk. She was intoxicated. They had been drinking in the VIP suite since, since about half past nine in the morning. And this is now about half past five. And is this the so, same lady that accused you of the assault? This is the same lady, Zamanene, who yeah. accuses me of the assault, who is uh, one of the people that has been drinking all day uh, in the in the VIP suite. So and and, and just, so I'm just going to push you. We've we got all of two minutes left. Uh, sorry, Pumlani. D- does any of this land up in the ears of any of the, the, the leading management? We don't talk about that the president of the club or the then director, who I believe is no longer director, Manzini Zungu, um, you know, does it land on any of the ears and what do they do in terms of taking action? After the incident, we get on the uh, the bus off to the hotel. The the woman who who accused me of assault, Zamanene, goes to the CEO, Usnen Jabulo, who is her friend, by the way. And uh, I then get a call from Usne asking, in a very accusatory tone, Pumlan Umshela and Fazan. I'm like, but who did I assault? No, Zama, he says, says you assaulted her. Um, and I say, no, but you're supposed to ask what happened first before you accuse me. I did not assault her. I have witnesses. I'm traveling with them here. You can ask them. They were there. They will tell you uh, the, the, there's no such incident that took place. Instead, I'm the one that was verbally abused by her. She, in, she hurled insults at us. 
We get to the hotel, Robert. I write a letter, a formal letter of, of, uh, of complaint to the HR manager, Olani Mzolo, to say I have been verbally abused by a female co-worker mm. who was drunk on duty. But my letter was ignored, Robert. No action was taken against that uh, female. Instead, they went out drinking. She and the same HR manager went out drinking in Sentin, and they went club hopping, various clubs in Sentin. Mm. I can't remember the names of the clubs they went to. So, they came back. Pumlani, let, let, let me end it here. Um, and I think for the benefit of our listeners, we, we will pick up on it because I believe that uh, there is another crucial part that we'll touch on. But do allow us uh, to pick up on the story when we do bounce back on the air again on Tuesday. But thank you so much indeed for your indulgence, Bob. I really appreciate the detail in which you've gone into. Thanks so much, Robert. I, I would not, no. Okay, I'm not going to be able to take the last part of what Pumlani has got to say, but we, like I say, I've been, I've been listening. You've been listening. You make up your mind either way. Catch you again on Tuesday. Have a great long weekend. Marawa Sports Worldwide Live in three, two, one. on nine four seven Vuma FM, Rise FM, and Soweto Live. Hashtag MSW.